it's a green tea morning. Well, I guess technically it's always green tea time after breakfast. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to a studio episode. So I went to one of my favorite places up in the mountains yesterday, a uh, nice little hidden gem in uh, the Gila National Forest. And that has no bearing on this episode, but on the way back, I uh, found some really nice light, the sun coming through the clouds and all of that stuff. And so I pulled over the side of the road and did some time lapses with my R5. And I've had a lot of questions lately about people asking me about how I'm editing my time lapses and all that stuff. So I figure this would be a great time to give you a walkthrough on how I'm editing my time lapses and the program that I use and my workflow and all of that stuff. And this is definitely the most intense, most complicated, most time consuming way to do time lapses. But I am a professional time lapse photographer and I do make money off of these time lapses. So it is important to me personally to invest this time and effort that it takes to edit these time lapses this way. Uh, and that's certainly not how you have to do it. But if you want to see how to get the best time lapses and how to get the most out of those time lapses, this is what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna be using a program called LR Time Lapse, And then of course, I'm gonna finish it up in Premiere and I'm gonna go through that whole process with you right now. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started because uh, it takes a minute. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up LR Time Lapse, And the link will be down below if you wanna check this out where I get it. They have some free versions, so if you wanna try it out, I'm using the one with the professional license because again, that's what I need personally. And I think it's like a 250 or $300 or something like that, uh, one time buy, which is great. So there's that. And then once that's open, I also need to go ahead and open Lightroom. You can do this in Bridge too, which I usually don't ever use Lightroom. I, I don't like Lightroom at all. And this is the only time that I ever use Lightroom and that's in conjunction with uh, LR time lapse. So here we are in the LR time lapse workflow and I've got it set to my visual workflow. So we're going to come down here to our file, organize the area, and I'm going to find my time lapses. So I shot two time lapses. I shot one 24 mil and one 70 mil. Uh, and the 24 mil I definitely underexposed because I didn't put, uh, normally in a scene like this I would put my maybe like some graduated ND filters or something to balance that sky out. Uh, but I'm also kind of testing the latitude and the dynamic range on the R5, which is what I'm filming this with right now. And I, I'm, basically I'm just gonna kind of push this image maybe a little harder than I normally would. Uh, but first we're gonna let this load here. So once that's all loaded, then we can hit play just to kind of preview what it's gonna look like and you'll see it's underexposed, there's flicker happening. Uh, there's a lot going on here that needs to be fixed. And there's just nothing better than LR time lapse to fix that kind of stuff. It's stuff that, this is the kind of like the flicker and all of that stuff and the editing the raw images. So I shot this all in raw, these are all raw files. And editing in raw and fixing flicker and all that, there's no other program that can do this that I know of right now. Certainly nothing that's as good as LR time lapse. By the way, this is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. This I paid full price for this product. I use it uh, all the time. I've been using it for years. It's the only thing that I trust and I use, so not sponsored. But there is a link down below if you want to check out LR time lapse. All right. So the first thing we need to do is make some keyframes. This is going to tell us where, at what point in the time lapse we want to edit in uh, Lightroom. So it's gonna analyze the scene and determine what it thinks, how many keyframes you need. And right now it thinks I just need one because we're looking here, this is my exposure level. And you can definitely tell that my exposure level is a little bit under. So this is, this is definitely uh, the even zero exposure, like perfectly exposed. So I'm definitely a couple stops under. But even with that, it's still really even and this line is still really straight. So. I am only gonna use one keyframe for this. So once I have that set, I'm just gonna hit save. So now we're just gonna click and drag this, hold on to it, and I'm just gonna drag to Lightroom and drop it in. 
So now we're in Lightroom and what you're going to notice is this first image is a four, given a four star rating and that's important, that's the key framed image. So if you have five key framed image or whatever, you're going to have five images wherever they are in the sequence that are going to be starred four star. So then we're going to go up here to filters and I'm going to go to the Lightroom, the LR time lapse keyframes. So that's given me, now that's only showing the one that I want to see because we're not going to develop all of them. We're only going to develop the keyframed images and then let LR time lapse and Lightroom do the rest. So we're going to go over here to the develop module and then I'm basically just going to start tweaking on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is a graduated filter. And it's important to note that when you're doing the graduated filters in LR time lapse in Lightroom, then you only want to use the filters that are already uh, these. They they give you four right here, and you can tweak these any way you want. But you got to use these ones. So I'm going to select this one, and then I'm going to drag it down, and I'm going to start messing with it here. So this is my filter where I'm going to work on the sky a little bit and I'm just going to do a few things here. should also be noted that um, with time lapses, even though I can edit the raws and stuff, I don't really like to push them too hard uh, in Lightroom, even though you could for a single image and it would look fine. So just some minor tweaking there and then I'm going to just do bring up the exposure just a bit since it was way under. But now bringing up the exposure, now I want to drop those highlights back down so that they're not blown out. And then I bring up the exposure and I'm keeping an eye on my histogram here to see where I want it and make sure these highlights are looking good. And then I'm just going to do the check these two boxes here for the profile corrections and the removing chromatic aberration. That's one of the best things that I love about being able to use Lightroom, the LR time lapse to edit the time lapses because if you just do a time lapse movie mode, uh, you can't fix that kind of stuff in Premiere or whatever video editor you're using. Bring those shadows up a little bit after I increase the contrast. All right, so I'm happy with that. So once you get it the way that you want it, basically you just go back to the library and you come up here to metadata and we're going to go save metadata to file and then we're going to hit continue so now that's updated all we got to do is come back into LR time lapse and hit reload and it's going to bring the metadata from that keyframed edited image in and then now you can see over here all of the things that I tweaked all of the settings so I dropped my highlights by 100, increased shadows, I dropped my whites, uh, clarity, all that kind of stuff. It's all there. And it's going to show you that it's going to apply them to all of the images. So next we're going to hit auto transition and this is going to set it up for the editing that it's going to need to do. Then the next thing we're going to do, and this is the first part that's going to take a little while to wait, depending on your computer, it can take longer or shorter. Uh, but then we're going to hit visual preview and that's basically going to apply those settings from the keyframe to the rest of the image and it's going to then create a visual preview that you can watch afterwards and you'll see it here starting to track and it's going to take a few minutes for me. So you see that change that just happened so it's correcting the rest of the images based on those edits and that's going to take a minute. All right, so now that we're done here with the visual preview, you can now go and hit the playback and you'll see your time lapse with all of the new edits. So it's looking better, but you'll notice there's still a lot of flicker. And this right here is the single reason why, if nothing else, LR time lapse for me personally is worth every penny. Because now I'm going to go here and I'm going to click this visual D flicker and it gives you a an amount basically a slider amount for how much flickering you want to to de-flicker 
And this one has quite a bit, so I'm actually gonna bring this up to about 30. And what you're gonna notice is when I'm here on zero, you're gonna see this squiggly line here. And that squiggly line is the exposures of each individual image put together on this line. So you can see all of these little bits just up and down, up and down, just the minute changes. And we're gonna smooth that out. So you see as I drag this forward, the green line it's going to be the target line and you're seeing it just smooth out completely. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to 30 and I'm going to hit apply. All right, so now once that's done, we get our happiness beep and we can come in here and check it out. And it's looking a hundred times better already. Zero uh, flicker and that's looking really great. So now we're all done with this part. So what we're gonna do is come back in here to Lightroom. So this is a really important step. You, at some point, you're gonna have to do this uh, for it to work, for it to render out. We're gonna right click on the image here and then you're gonna make sure you go to Folder and Library. And then once you do that, all these pop up. And then if they didn't, you can just turn the filters off right here. So now what we wanna do is we want to Control A and select all of these and then we're going to go up to metadata and we're going to go to read metadata from files this time and then it's going to say are you sure you want to do this yes go ahead and read them so that's bringing all those changes from LR time lapse and putting them into so that Lightroom can read them now so once that's done then we're just going to go up to file and export and then now you're gonna get your LR time-lapse export thing is gonna pop up. Okay, so this is where another part where it's personal preference on how much effort you wanna put into it. But again, like I said, I want the maximum amount of effort uh, because I want the maximum amount of everything I can get, a quality I can get out of this. So what I'm gonna do is I've set my output path already and I'm just gonna go ahead and label this so there's my label. Now this is where you can go ahead and resize it to whatever you want. And I'm shooting with the R5, so I have the option to do 8K here. Um, but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do original file size, and that is the three by two big un, unchanged uh, resolution. And I'm gonna leave that in original, and I'm gonna show you why in just a little bit. But then I'm gonna go ahead and select JPEG, so it's gonna export these to JPEG. Since I don't need to do any more editing on the images, I'm fine with JPEGs, since that's the only way that I can get Premiere to read the images. But you could also select TIFFs if you wanted to do them to uh, like After Effects or whatever, which sometimes necessary. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and keep it at eight bits uh, color, because again, because again, I've already edited everything, so this is gonna be fine. And then we're gonna select, we're gonna leave, there's nothing in the advance that I need to do. So the rest of that we're gonna leave blank or we're gonna leave as it is. And then I'm gonna hit export. And this is the part that's gonna take a long time. So, especially depending on your computer, you know, because Lightroom is having to export, in my case, uh, 320, 42 megapixel raw images into JPEGs on my little laptop, so that's gonna take a minute. All right, so once that's rendered out, then we're gonna go in here back to LR time-lapse, and then now this is gonna be popped up here, and we are, this is where we're gonna do the final export for the video file that we're gonna create from those JPEGs. But for now, this is again gonna be my workflow for how I like to do things, so I'm gonna keep it in a the codec, I'm gonna keep it in an MJPEG codec because I it's it's a little bit larger of a file size, but uh, it still is editable and I just I like it. That's that's my preferred codec. So then I'm gonna to go to output size and again I'm gonna keep resolution to the source resolution and we're gonna get into that in just a second. Frame rate I like to keep at 24 frames a second or more specifically 23.976 which is industry standard for 24p. Um, I don't really mess with that. I know a lot of people like to shoot time lapses in 30p, and I know that when you do 
uh, your time lapse interval movie mode, you know, and your cameras or whatever, um, they're always almost always going to be 30p. But I like my 24p, so I'm going to keep it with that quality. I'm going to go with very high. Uh, there's not too much difference in my experience between very and ultra for any noticeable thing. So very high is sufficient for me. I'm going to keep it there. Color sampling, I'm going to keep it 422 uh, because that's pretty good and I've already done all the editing I really need to do. 422 is pretty standard. It's middle of the road. Uh, and if you don't know about color sampling and color space, then don't worry about that. Just leave it as 422. So and then this also gives you the option to do uh, force output at 16 by 9. Again, since I'm, I didn't select the 4K UHD, which is a 16 by 9. Um, or 8K UHD, which I could have done, again, because I'm shooting with the R5. I, I can force it then, and it'll show you this red box around, but I'm not going to do that, and I'll show you why. So just trust me on all of these things. We're going to leave it there and render this out. This renders pretty quickly. So once that's done, you get your nice beep, and then it'll show up in the, it'll open up the folder that you set it to. So you see I have a crap ton of these. So there it is selected. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open up Premiere and then I'm gonna show you the final finishing touches on uh, exporting and getting everything done. I like to just go that little extra step in Premiere and you don't have to, you could have uh, done everything and, and had it export it out into your 4K or your 8K or your 6K or 1080p and all of that stuff, but I'm just gonna go that extra mile. So the first thing we're gonna do when we come in here to Premiere is create a new timeline, and this part doesn't matter what you're gonna create. So normally the last thing I had it set on was DSLR 10, uh, 1080-24p. That's fine because we're not actually gonna use that. And what we're gonna do now is come here and grab that time lapse and just drag it into the timeline. So now you're going to see this warning: uh, clip does not match the sequence settings. Change the sequence settings to match the clip settings. This is where I'm going to go ahead and choose change sequence settings. So basically, that changed the sequence settings to fit this. So this is now a ginormous 8K plus uh, timeline, and it's um, four by three. I mean, uh, three by two. So the reason why I leave it in its original form is because image stabilization. So if this one doesn't look too bad, there wasn't any wind, and I'm using a pretty wide aperture, I mean a pretty wide focal length, 24 millimeters, so there isn't really any shake. However, when you do have camera shake, either due to the wind or the focal length, exaggerating the shake, all of that, I prefer to apply my warp stabilizer to the full res image before I downsize anything so I can get the best quality out of it. And if I were gonna do that, I would just come over to effects and I would come down to video effects and distort and then I'll grab my warp stabilizer and I will just drop it on and then it will analyze and stabilize and get all those shakes out of there, those little minute shakes that you don't notice while you're shooting the time lapse and they really add up. And that's what makes this so great about doing it this way. And that's why I don't just finish off all the rendering in LR time lapse and Lightroom. And then, because I another thing is I don't do that much editing, I don't do that much tweaking. I didn't use any of my presets. Like I have my own preset pack, uh, and that I that I made and I edit for you know photos and stuff like that. And sometimes I use them, but I generally prefer to just use Lightroom and LR time lapse to get the image cleaned up and uh, looking the way I want for just all around cleanliness. And then I come in here. And then I'll go and I'll use, uh, do the rest of the color grading here. So maybe I'll add, you know, just a little more contrast, bump up the saturation just a hair more. And then I'm going to come in here to creative and I'm going to apply one of my LUTs. And that's too strong, so I'm going to bring it down about 50%. 
So now I'm much happier with that and you can see if I turn off the effects you can see that's the before and that's the after. So now I've got everything ready and the only thing I need to do now is I'm going to make a new sequence. I'm going to hit control N and I'm going to come out here and render this particular one in 4K. So I'm going to go to my customs and I've already created a custom for UHD 24P and that has all my settings. So I'm going to hit OK. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to change the sequence just so I don't get myself confused. This is the 4K sequence. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to grab this, Control c copy it, bring it over here, paste it in. Here's the other reason why I don't do the forced crop and all that stuff. So I tend to shoot uh, time lapses wider than I need, and I know because I have cameras like my R5, and any camera that's bigger than resolution than 4K will give you the option to move things around in post. So if you don't have a slider or motion control or anything like that, then you can create it very easily. And all you gotta do is shoot wider than you need. And in this case, I can you can see that the image here, if I zoom out, that I, I have a lot to work with. So I could just crop it in right there to uh, 50%, 48%, and that's about because this was an 8K time lapse. Or, since I shot wider than I need, I can crop in a little bit like that because I don't care about these clouds up here so much. I care about the light rays here and a little bit of the foreground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop in a little bit and then I'm gonna adjust my position. So I like that. And now I'm going to do the stopwatch. So this will animate. So I'm creating a keyframe for animation. And I'm going to get this to where I want it. So I want it to start over here. I, I initially liked that tree in the shot, but then the light happening is kind of away from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it here. And then I'm going to drag that keyframe all the way over to the beginning of the time lapse. And then I'm going to come anywhere over here and I'm going to drag. Then I'm going to change the position and get it to where I want the ending position. So I want the ending position to be right there. And then I'm just going to grab this keyframe for the ending position and drag it all the way to the end. And now I can scroll back and play back. So I have an 8K time lapse that's down res to a 4K time lapse, which is going to increase the sharpness, and it gives me all of that extra room to play with to make the final uh, and be able to mimic the motion control and all of that. So that's another reason why I shoot the way that I shoot, because I like having as many options as possible. So I'm going to finish up now. I have everything the way that I want to make sure that I'm selected here in my timeline. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Control M. So that's going to bring up my render box here in uh, Media Encoder for Premiere. And I have another preset that I have made. And I'm going to set it to 4K high quality. So I made this preset and this basically ensures that I get the highest quality the bitrate and all of that kind of stuff out of it. If you guys want to see like more videos on that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments below because I'm not going to go into that in this video because this video is already super long. But once you get your render uh, preset the way that you want it and the codec and all of that stuff, then I'm just going to render it out and we'll be good to go. All right, so that's it. That's how I render my time lapses from start to finish. Like I said, I know that's a lot uh, for a workflow and it definitely doesn't always need to be that complicated, but that's how I like to do it and that's how I like to get the most out of it. So I'm gonna wrap things up here. If you guys have any questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning my workflow or LR time lapse or Premiere or the settings or anything like that, leave those in the comments below and you know that I will definitely answer them. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got new videos every week. 
quick plug if you guys enjoy uh, editing and you want to speed up your workflow or try something different or check out the way that I edit my images, you can check out my preset pack below. And then if you really want to get the most out of your time lapses and you like the way that I work and you like my vlogs and all that kind of stuff, you want to hang out with me, then definitely check out my workshops. I do a lot of time lapse workshops. I have two coming up that are pretty much ready to be announced and a few more that are coming up that are going to be really awesome. And we're going to focus on a lot of things, including time lapse photography. So if you like that kind of stuff, you want to hang out with me and learn, then definitely check out my workshops. The link will be down below. And if you have any questions about the workshops or the preset packs or anything like that, then leave those questions too, and you know, I'll answer them. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around. If you want to see more editing content and more behind the scenes content uh, where I do deep dives into stuff and just extra stuff that I just don't put out on the regular channel, then definitely check out the memberships also. Those are, uh, those are down below and the different membership levels will allow you to get access to that extra content, discounts on all of the stuff that I mentioned, including the presets and the workshops. It's really awesome. I super appreciate all the people who are already members. You guys definitely help me and my family and my career, and I can't do that stuff without you guys. So huge thanks to all of you guys. That's it. This tea is staring me in the face, and it is second breakfast time. I'm starving. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.